This is Around the Farm, the podcast about all things ag. I'm your host, Clint Schaffer, and today we're going to be talking with Andrew Penny, a technical agronomist for Bayer Crop Science and the co-host of the podcast, A Penny for Your Thoughts. Well, let's get started. Andrew, welcome to the show uh, here on Around the Farm. Uh, how about uh, you introduce yourself to our listeners? Yeah, absolutely, Clint. Uh, happy to be here. Uh, kind of cool to be on this side of, of podcasting. Uh, yeah, so I'm Andrew Penny. Uh, I'm a technical agronomist for uh, Bear Crop Science. I uh, represent uh, DeKalb and Asgro. Uh, yeah, I work, uh, live and work here in central Iowa and uh, cover the eastern part of southwest Iowa for my territory. Nice. I, I think if, I, if I'm not mistaken here, you got the nickname the plant doctor. Tell us, uh, h- how'd you end up, uh, end up with this and uh, how'd you get it, you know, decide on a career in, uh, in agronomy here? Yeah, so uh, I, I guess my, my nickname at Iowa State actually was King Corn. And I, I had a, nice. a good friend of mine that I work with often there at Iowa State uh, would, you know, kind of gave me that title. And, uh, but only because, you know, anytime people were talking anything about other than corn and, and soybeans, I would just kind of nod off and, and not listen. You know, I, I got started in agronomy. I, you know, I, I get to ask that question quite a bit. And, and I would say I didn't, I didn't choose agronomy. Agronomy kind of chose me. You know, I, I was one of those uh, younger uh, kids that had no clue what he wanted to do in life. And uh, I ended up, uh, so my dad was a CEO of a co-op, retail co-op here in Iowa. And he has, actually has his master's degree in agronomy. And uh, so he was, he was a CEO and I started working retail. This would have been in 2006 or seven. And, uh, you know, just trying to figure out what I wanted to do in life, the, the path and where, where I wanted to focus my, my energy. And I, I started working with seed and see just, you know, something just clicked where I was like, man, you know, it, it was the the trait technology and, and all the science that went into the, the you know, a bag of seed. And I, I was just fascinated with, with everything that went into that and just felt like I needed to learn more. And so, you know, I worked retail for a number of years and just that that passion for all the science that goes into the background of, of a bag of seed just kind of propelled and, and made me want to learn more. And so that's kind of how I ended up you know, going to Iowa State and getting my my uh, advanced degrees. So, so I got to ask, in your in your career, what's the most exciting technology from a seed perspective that's been launched, and what is the one technology that you're most excited about looking into the future? I think it's it's uh, inserting trait insertion would probably be the most fascinating. You know, thinking about rootworm traits or um, drop drop guard traits, pretty fascinating story. You know how they, how they discovered that. Um, I, I think that's what really fascinates that whole process of, of starting with a trait, you know, a, a BT trait, for example, pulling that from bacteria, that that whole insertion process. And, and there's there's different ones. But I think that's just fascinating how we can go from finding something and getting that into a plant. And then on, and then on top of that, getting that into a, a hybrid, you know, through through production, you know, going from an inbred to all the crosses and stuff. I think I think that's probably the most fascinating thing as far as future technology. Um, I think that's yet to be determined. You know, I, I think there's just so much we do when it comes to breeding. Um, you know, short corn is obviously a fascinating story, um, both the GMO and, you know, the non-GMO and the GMO trait. Um, it's it just all fascinating to me, that 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 side. Oh, absolutely. I think uh, it's it's going to be an exciting uh, several years, you know, here. Uh, it's just uh, we work in an industry that's just constantly changing, which I think is just so, so much fun. So... So Andrew, what's the uh, what's the name of your podcast? And and give us a give us a synopsis. What can uh, what can listeners expect? Yeah, so it's it's called a, a penny for your thoughts, and it's uh, P E N N E Y to to match up with my last name. And it's it's basically um, you know not it, the the end goal and and uh, you know what what listeners will take away. It's it's uh, non biased uh, science based information. And we we interview uh, university professors, you know, the, the the people actually doing the research and giving all, you know, other growers and agronomists like me the, the information that we use to make management decisions. So, you know, if, if you're if you're someone that wants to know about specific topics within crop production and, and understand the, the time and energy and research that goes into understanding all these issues and, and you know, stuff that we deal with, then you'll, you'll find it uh, enjoyable. 
You know, it, it's funny because I remember that conversation uh, that you and I had out of the Farm Progress Show. You know, just talking about getting getting started and and microphones and you know all the all those different fun conversations around podcasting. And uh, next thing you know, I'm opening up social media and I'm seeing like just all these episodes of uh, a penny for your thoughts. Right? <laughs> I mean, I'm seeing this uh, seeing this constantly roll out. And also, just hats off on a great name, man. Yeah, it just happens. Uh, my my last name works out. Uh, yeah, that's I've got a few compliments on that. It was kind of just something fun, and you know, again, when we started this, didn't think it it would kind of blow up the way it did. And uh, you know, one of the funny things uh, we you know we just gave a presentation at the Midwest Marketing Conference on on uh, the do's and don'ts of, of pod you know starting a new podcast. And Sean brought you know right now we have some some really nice equipment to record and, and you know headsets and all that. But we, one of the the PowerPoint slides we talked about evolving in our, our very first episode. You know, I, I don't even know what the thing would be called, but it was just this little round thing that was a speaker in a, a microphone all in one. And that was the very first episode we recorded on. And, and listening to it is it's just almost embarrassing hearing the sound quality. And so we, we've had two different uh, production consoles since then. Now we have a really nice one, uh, but it, it's funny to see where where we've you know, where we came from and, and just thinking about the whole evolution, you know, the whole process of, of evolving and, and getting better at what we do, even though we're not professionals by any means. You know, it, it is incredible. I mean, just uh, even even our journey here on Around the Farm, uh, you know, as you, as you look into podcasting, you know, you start looking at, you know, microphones and speakers and if, you know, we do audio or uh, video as well. So, you know, cameras and all that. And it, there, it's just a vast world of options out there. And it's kind of hard to like figure out like what is the best path right and uh and you just hopefully you know you you pick something and you roll with it and uh, you hope it sounds good right yeah and i'm i'm totally blessed you know uh, sean and i make the you know he's my co-host i'm i'm his co-host and we make a perfect team because you know not only not only are we good friends and we can have that that normal conversation with with anybody that just seems normal but i would say more importantly he's he's the audio expert and is really good at all that and i'm not so uh, in any success we have, I feel like is uh, attributed to the, the the good sound quality that we have because of him. Now, a lot of times when you're setting up, you know, you try finding a little bit of of uh, what 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 is your format going to be, right? And I've seen uh, all sorts of different podcasts, whether it's you know conversationalist, whether it's uh, interview style, whether there's a panel, you know, different things of that nature. What what did you all try to maybe mold your show from, or did you just kind of say let's throw a mic on and let's figure it out as we go no that was uh you know it, it was something before we actually got serious about it and and started asking you know people you know trying to get recommendations and tips on on how to do it we had we had been talking about doing something whether it was video or podcasting for probably about a year and just always had these ideas going in the background and finally we just got to the point where we're like hey let's do it but it kind of just came uh, again, wanting to get information out. You know, if we're, if we're seeing something on the field, if there's a topic that, that needs addressed, uh, and not only in our area but uh, across the Corn Belt, and and so it was kind of just something that, um, you know, w- wanting to get that relevant science-based information out to people, with without any you know sales pitch or you know trying to say this product's better than this product, just trying to get the the you know, professional recommendations from, you know, university professors and, and science-based research from universities out to growers that so they can make the best best decision on their farm. So, you know, and something like that, especially when you're trying to get, uh, you know, working with universities and and trying to get uh, trying to get those professionals to, to have that conversation, sourcing guests become pretty important. How, how do you go about sourcing the folks that you're bringing onto your show? Yeah, so I'm, I'm pretty lucky, you know, I, I a good majority of the guests we have on uh, are, you know, people I know just from when I was in grad school. You know, I was lucky enough. You know, I had some really good major professors that introduced me to a lot, a lot of people in uh, different fields from from different universities. And so, you know, uh, reaching out to them, whether it's, um, you know, I, again, I guess it was pe- people that I somewhat knew in the contacts I made in grad school. But it, it was also kind of, uh, you know, while I was in grad school, reaching out on my own, hey, what, you know, getting people's opinions and, and keeping those contacts, you know, just wanting to pick their brain and learn more and, and keeping those contacts, you know, that, that relationship going. And so a, a lot of it's just reaching out and, 
you know, hey, this topic is is popular and, and something that needs to discuss more. What do you think about um, you know being on the show? Now, now, how about looking at your dream guest? Who's that? Who's that one person that uh, you know that, that that you would love to get on the podcast that you just haven't been able to get yet? So I, I would say we're pretty dang lucky because everyone that I've I've reached out to is, has been on the show. Uh, but but I you know if if there's probably one maybe two guests I would like to have on I, I would say I, I've already had two of my uh, dream guests on and actually one of them was a co-host and that, that would have been Darren Mueller so he was one, one of my old MPs at Iowa State and uh, he was actually on the episode we just released last weekend today uh, one of the guest co-hosts um, so I would say him and Allison Robertson just because they're there's really good friends of mine and people that I looked up to even before grad school um, you know they were they were my first uh, big guest. He, he probably doesn't know the impact they had on my career, but it would probably be Fred Bilo from from Illinois. And and I I know Fred. As, you know, even before you know, we're doing some uh, research with him on Shortcorn. So I was I was lucky enough to go listen to him last year. And so even before that, I, I kind of knew Fred, but I haven't asked him to be on the show just because I feel like he's he's a pretty busy guy and hard to get a hold of. So uh, maybe at some point I'll reach out and ask him. But yeah, he, he would probably be my dream guest just because. I remember, I remember, uh, I don't even know what year it would have been, 2007 or eight, you know, when his seven wonders of, of corn came out. And I, th- I think that just changed the way a lot of people thought about managing and, you know, and, and shooting for high yields in corn. And I, j- I just remember reading that and just, uh, again, wanting to learn more about every subject that he touched on. And, and even though he never really directly impacted my career, I just remember that kind of split, lit, you know, was, was the spark. You know, I I got to listen to Fred, uh, uh, Doctor Below there uh, uh, two times this past winter, and uh, it was funny because uh, they're at uh, two different uh, meetings in uh, in Illinois with a couple of our different teams, and you'd think, you know, after you heard somebody present uh, the second time you hear them that you're just you know kind of zoning out, you've already heard the material and you're not. Li- <laughs> and I was like just as zoned in on the probably even more, right? Because then I was trying to figure out what details I missed the first time. But, uh, you know, we talked about uh, about firing up uh, a podcast. If you could go back and give yourself a word of advice uh, outside of maybe that first microphone speaker combination that uh, that you had, uh, what would be a, what would be a piece of advice you'd give yourself? I, I would say probably, you know, as, as Sean and I, Sean and I thought about the, the whole format of the show, you know, I think there's, there's probably two things that I would change had, had we known more about, you know, now you have all the, the the statistics of every show, you know, you have these podcast hosting websites that can give you all the data about, you know, the, how, how long everybody listens to your show, how many listeners you have downloads, all that stuff. Um, I'd probably go back and, and be a little bit more formatted early on. You know, it, it initially was kind of, we had some questions, but it wasn't really outlined as, as well as we are now. You know, now we kind of go into a show with, with the line of questions and then we have, the, you know, the name by whether it's Sean or I that asked the questions, everything is kind of laid out. And so we kind of know how the flow of the show is going to go. At the beginning, we had questions, but it was kind of just, you know, general conversation, which which still flowed well. But, you know, it, it still make, makes a difference when you're when you're trying to ask those questions. And as I'm sure, you know, trying to keep the conversation going while thinking about new questions that might pop up while you're talking to someone. And, and then the second one, I, I think, you know, we learned and initially when we, we first started recording and, and releasing these episodes, they were about an hour to hour and 10 minutes long because we, we would cover some pretty in-depth topics that, you you know, we just couldn't keep to 20 to 30 minutes, which was, that was our initial goal, you know, 20 to 30 minute show, you know, try and fall in line with the average in, in the recommendation podcast length, you know, for, for a show. But we, we just couldn't with the, the in-depth topics that we were talking about, you know, whether it's going into the science or the management. And so now, you know, our show, anytime we interview a professor, it's about an hour and 10 minutes, give or take. And so now we, we break it up into two episodes. And so we have part one's always uh, about the science of whatever we're talking about, whether it's, you know, soil, reading a soil test analysis or understanding a disease. We'll, we'll talk about the science first. You know, that's about 30 minutes. And then the second, uh, second episode is always about management. So how, how can how can we take that science part and then, you know, introduce that into uh, a grower's management practices or how can we, you know, take that and, and use that on the farm? 
I, I, I love the approach of the part one, part two, right? Uh, you know, I listen, listen to podcasts and, and watch, uh, watch videos on YouTube and things of that nature. And, you know, you get over that, that half hour mark and, uh, it, it, you definitely start seeing that viewership or the the listeners start falling off, right? Yep. Uh, and so I think that's a that's a great plan of attack to 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 break that into into a couple different parts. And I love that you got it set up in you know the science and then the management. So it's kind of like you, you you train your listeners to to know what to expect at that point in time, which is really cool. Yeah. So basically, basically it's, uh, we we get pretty nerdy with the science stuff go in depth and nerd out. And then, uh, you know, the part two, we, we bring it out into the real world and how, how can, uh, whether you're an agronomist, crop consultant, or a grower, how can you use that in the, in the real world? So, so being somebody who's been based in agronomy and based in science, uh, have you, you know, been talking to some of these folks and had a, let's say either a change of perspective or, uh, maybe look at even like the future of agriculture a little differently than what you did before you started doing this podcast? No, you know, I, I wouldn't say that it, 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 I don't think it changed my, my perspective at all. You know, I, I think I had probably the, the biggest change in my perspective in, in agriculture. You know, I, I was obviously interested in it, but, um, I, I would say when I, when I was, uh, I TA'd a lot at Iowa State when I was in grad school and I also taught uh, Agronomy 279 or co-taught Agronomy 279 with uh, uh, another person there at Iowa State. And and I had that that moment where I, I, I could kind of see agronomy shifting and, and becoming cool. You know, there was a time you go back when, when I was in my undergrad and, you know, 20 years ago, it, and it just wasn't cool. There was a select people. You kind of knew who that group, you know, that, that person was that was major, majoring in agronomy. You know, it was probably, I don't know what the statistics actually would be, but it seemed like it was 70% male and it was just, you know, people that grew up on a farm. And, you know, when I was there teaching and, and TAing, it was, it was 50% female, 50% male. And there was a lot of, a lot of students that were, weren't even from the farm. And so I, I kind of saw that transition to where ag agronomy was becoming that cool thing. And, and I think a lot of it, you know, kind of like when I fell in love with, with agronomy and, and seed and traits, you know, all, all the money that's getting pumped into the technology and, and science, you know, the, there's just so many opportunities. And so I, I think that was my first big aha moment. So, so I would say I was kind of, I've, I've kind of seen that in, I would say the podcast interviewing all the professors that we do, it kind of just expanded on that. You know, there's getting, getting to meet all the people that, and, and talk with all the people about the, the research that they're doing you know, getting, having them discuss their grad students or, or their research. It's, it's, it's pretty cool. One, one last question on, uh, on your podcast here, you know, as I, as I hear you talk about all these great guests and, and wonderful, wonderful speakers that you've had on, what would be your, your top, you know, two or three episodes that you would say, Hey, if you're going to start listening to our podcast, go listen to these, these episodes, this will get you hooked. Yeah, that's, that's a good question. Um, you know, it seems like every every time that Sean and I re release an episode, we're like, man, this one's our our best one yet. <laughs> and I, I think it's just because we're, you know, we're we're getting more polished and and better at ans answering the questions and and writing the questions and our so everything's just gotten better. So, but but I look back, you know, every one of them, I th I think. You'll, if if you're from have a farming background or, or agronomy, if if you just love crop production, you'll you'll find any episode interesting and, and like it as much as the other. But still, I, I think my highlights are, are still when I interviewed Darren and Allison, just because, and, and especially when I had Darren as a co-host, you know, just because there's someone I looked up to before I became friends with them, and the, and they, you know, in grad school. So those were kind of cool moments for me because you know you kind of have that moment where you're like, man, how did I get here? It's, it's pretty cool. Well, well, Andrew, I'd like to shift a little bit into this year, into planting season, and maybe uh, maybe what you're hearing from farmers at this point in time. Yeah, it's, it's been a, uh, another, you know, it's kind of the norm. It's kind of been a, a strange uh, sp spring. You know, you, you look at the last uh, three years, we, we, you know, last year in much of the Corn Belt, uh, especially Iowa, you know, we were extremely wet. So it kind of, we had a lot of delayed planting, you know, was, there there was some corn and beans that didn't put in until the end of May. You know, this year we had uh, about a week, uh, give or take, um, where, you know, April 10th, April 11th, there was, there was a lot of corn and beans put in the ground. 
So it's, you know, overall, I would say that the progression has, has been really good, but I, I think it's quite a bit different because, you know, you think back to 2020, 2021, we were extremely dry. Then we go to a, a really wet year in the spring. And I, I think every one of those years, we kind of had, you know, a week, week and a half where there was every, every, everybody was going. There was just a huge rush to get corn or beans in the ground. And this year, it's it's been so, you know, we've just, the 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 windows that we've had, it is, it is yet to really feel like there's this huge rush. So we've kind of had the joke with a number of dealers that planting is going to be over before we even feel like it started. You know, there, there's, in, in my in my territory, we're probably going to be, hopefully be done uh, by, you know, majority of growers will be done planting by Sunday if, if we kind of miss this rain this weekend. But there, there's still, just because, you know, we had the early window, um, we haven't been overly saturated. So there, there's just been spots where we can continue to plant or, you know, if, if we get slight rains, it, it doesn't really put them out too long. So I think that I think that's probably been the biggest thing that, that I've heard across the Corn Belt. You know, um, I, I think soil temps are probably the one limiting factor. You know, as I talk with other agronomists, uh, there's probably more of a difference from what I've heard going north to south versus east to west uh, in the Corn Belt. So, so yeah, it's overall, I'd say planting plant, plant, planting has been really good uh, this year. Um, no major concerns on, on early planting, but yeah. Sandra, I'd like to transition a little bit around, uh, around what's happening today. So, I mean, we're, uh, we're here in, uh, you know, the start of planting season. Uh, what are you hearing from guys? Yeah. So we, we've been pretty fortunate, you know, uh, comparing the 2023 planting season to what we saw, you know, the last three years going from, you know, pretty dry conditions in 2020, 2021, and then we were, you know, much, much of the corn belt was pretty wet and had delayed planting in 2022. So I, I would say we're, we're pretty fortunate here in, in the, the current growing season that, you know, I think a, a good majority of growers um, will be done here in the next, you know, week with, with corn and beans. Um, I, I've heard there's there's probably a little bit difference, big, bigger difference in, uh, you know, the percentage of corn and beans in the ground going north to south versus east to west, just based on soil temps that we've we've encountered. You know, I think I'll, much of the Corn Belt had some pretty warm temperatures that early early April, but then we kind of had a cold spell. So, but o- overall, I think you know, I, I think it's we're kind of setting up to have a really good growing season. Yeah, we we sank a uh, a bunch of beans in there. I think it was uh, April twelfth, which was about a, a week earlier than yep. what we've ever started planting before, right? So uh, that's awesome. Glad to hear. I'm glad to hear more ge- beans are getting put in the ground early versus corn that's that's what we keep saying right uh, let the ground warm up for our corn and uh so we'll start uh corn uh this week so uh is what we're uh, what we're hoping to so uh, which it looks like there's at least a warm patch coming so uh yeah. you, you know there has been some conversation around that though you know you talked about it being warm and then it uh you know kind of turning out cold um for the folks that, that put you know whether it was beans or corn in the ground i know uh guys have been asking man what, what what are my seeds doing under there for you know being in that cold ground for a week and a half you know while it was while it was that cold what are your thoughts what are, what do farmers need to be looking out for at that point yeah, so I've already been on a number of uh, calls and, and gone and dug some some corn and beans. You know, there, there's a lot of growers kind of wondering that, you know, how, how that seed's doing in the ground. And, and every, I, I've been pretty fortunate. Every field that that I've gone to, you know, d- digging corn, the, the radical looks good and healthy. The, the coleoptile looks, you know, good and healthy, no leafing out underground. You know, same with beans. You know, every, every bean field I've seen, the uh, hypocotyl looks good, cotyledons look good. So, you know, as even though, you know, the April 10th, 11th, 12th, those early planting dates have been sitting in the ground for, for a while, I've been pretty fortunate. I think it's, you know, we haven't had saturated soils. Um, everything looks good as of now. So I, I think the next test is just to get a little bit of heat, you know, have have, have that, you know, those, those plants start emerging. And then we can start getting a good feel for, you know, the, the final stands. But right now I'm feeling really good about it. Would you blame some of that on, uh, you know, just how good seed treatment is nowadays? Oh, for sure. Yeah. I mean, you look at um, how, how well those active ingredients work. I, I think the biggest issue when you start talking, you know, you, you got stuff sitting in the ground for three weeks. You know, I would say on average, you're lucky if you get 21 to 30 days of residual on a lot of those seed treatments. You know, M- Mother Nature plays a big role in that moisture and all that and, and active ingredients. But yeah, I mean, if if we were to plant corn or beans that early and let it sit in the ground that long with, without a seed treatment, you'd, you'd tell a difference. 
for sure. Yeah, no, that uh, that makes sense. So, well, hey, I, I, another thing too. I mean, uh, I think uh, somebody out here listening, you know, can can look at somebody like yourself and say, uh, you know, that you've had this great career path that you've had uh, that uh, going through going through your your master's and doctorate and and now uh, in agronomy and uh, within Bayer. Uh, what, what are some steps that somebody could, could look at if they are interested in getting a career in agronomy as well? Yeah, I would say that the biggest thing, and, and we, you know, Sean and I touched on this when we talked about the, the do's and don'ts of starting a new podcast. I would, I would just say that the, the biggest tip I could give anybody is just find something you're passionate about. And, and I was lucky enough to find something that, that I can, I can read about, I can, I can talk about, and it doesn't seem like work. You know, I, I love love talking about crop production, love talking about corn and beans and, you know, it, it kind of transition to the podcast, right? You know, I, I'm a believer in, in people, no matter what the subject is, I think listeners can sense pa- sense passion, right? So, you know, there, there's no BS in passion, right? So, you know, th- that, that would be my number one recommendation. There's so many different opportunities with an egg, whether it's precision technology, you know, studying molecules, plant physiology, weed science, plant pathology, that you know the possibilities are endless so i would say just find your passion find something you love love learning about love talking about and you know all the good things will come after that you need to put out some merch that says no bs and passion right there i'll i'll, I'll buy a t-shirt with that on it right there that's that's fantastic that's like tagline of the day right there should I, I better copyright that quick huh? yeah yeah right after this call man be call, calling up a lawyer somewhere so <laughs> Well, one of the other things I wanted to talk to you about too, uh, and and I found this out during our uh, our brief conversation at uh, at Farm Progress Show. But uh, tell me a little bit about uh, your your mini museum, is what I'm going to call it, with all your uh, Decal Basgro swag. Yeah, there's there's not a a whole lot of people that know about it. You know, I don't, I don't go around and and show show it off a whole lot or, or talk about it. But yeah, I've been collecting Decal memorabilia for. Uh, geez, probably 15 or 20 years. And uh, yeah, now everybody's going to know about it, I guess. <laughs> yeah, I would say it's probably second to none. It was uh, it was fascinating. And sorry to break the secret out to the world here, Andrew. I mean, I just, I, I couldn't, I couldn't keep it in anymore. But uh, <laughs> you, you were, t- and I, I think you had like cufflinks and all sorts of crazy things that, uh, that, that they had with the cow logos on it. So yeah, I got I got a I got some uh, curio cabinets. Uh, I got go. two curio, you know, I got stuff all over the walls, bags, signs, and I got two curio cabinets full of all the little stuff. Just you know, whether it's dime, you know, I got a couple of diamond pendants from when they used to give dealers, you know, back in the seventies for winning awards. Just just weird, random, cool stuff with the Dekel logo. I guess it was meant to be, you know. Yeah, there you go. There, were, were, actually, that's a good question. Were you, were you starting to collect this before you worked for DeKalb? Oh yeah, it, I mean, it, it was, uh, it was, it was kind of, you know, I, I, I thought about staying at the university for a while, um, but even, even when I when I started grad school, it was it was my end goal to work, uh, work with Montana now now Bear and DeKalb, yeah, for sure. So, so uh, another thing too, I know that there's a lot of, uh, let's say rivalry between, uh, between colleges, right? So, you know, especially when you start looking at the, at the top ag schools, I mean, I know I work with a lot of folks and there's a lot of pride where, where everybody's went to, right? So what, what's the, what's your biggest, uh, biggest rivalries here? I would say in internally, probably just because of a number of coworkers, you know, I, I can think of like my boss, my counterpart, you know, our, our, our DeKalb, there's, there's a lot of K-Staters and, and K, K-State is a phenomenal egg school. Lot, lots of great people came out of it. I, I would say that's, that's probably the most common uh, rivalry joke that we have here in, internally, at least in my neck of the woods. <laughs> nice. You know, that's, that's the one thing that I've seen in this industry that, uh, you know, I'd, I'd love to know the number of calls that always start with some sort of banter between everybody's, uh, everybody's schools, right? I'm, I'm thinking of all the, the, the fun professors that we've interviewed. And I, we were, me and Sean were joking about we were hoping to finally get somebody from Ohio State so we could, we could you know, introduce them as from the Ohio State. And, and so we, we just had a, a professor from Illinois that did his... Uh, can't remember if it's undergrad or master's uh, there. And so we finally got to to do the Ohio State. Yeah, yeah. I've, I've been corrected on that before. So that's uh, that's an important oh, yeah. uh, important thing. So It is. 
Well, hey, now I'd like to get to the into the quick rapid fire here. This is going to be a this or that. We're going to have a little fun here. Here, so auger wagon or green cart? Green cart for sure. Ah, you're just wrong, but okay. Uh, you just you know that's just. And I don't think I've ever heard anybody that knows anything about farming say. <laughs> oh, <laughs> say come whatever, on. whatever. You, <laughs> you just went right for the jugular on that one, man. <laughs> I should, maybe I came out wrong. I don't know. I've never heard anybody that has actually been on a farm or been around farming that uses that term. Well, you've met one now and uh, <laughs> I, I've got a couple of them, a couple people on my team, but not very many. So uh, you probably win that round. So <laughs> how about uh, tea or coffee? Coffee. How about iPhone or Android? iPhone. You, you know what? Surprisingly, since I've started doing this, you're the first iPhone Everybody I've talked to has been been Andrew. I'm iPhone as well. So welcome to the club. So that, that is surprising. How about planting season or harvest season? Harvest season. Nice. Love the wet. Love the weather. Love the yep. love this as the smell and everything. Just the environment and the feeling. The kind of this magic spark going on. You put all that time and energy and passion into raising a crop, and then yeah, love it. How about, uh, I think I know this one just from our conversation how we first started this thing off, but uh, corn or soybeans? Corn for sure. (laughs) I figured with the king corn, (laughs) I figured you had to go with that one. Well, that's cool, man. Well, hey, I, Andrew, I just appreciate you taking time out of your busy day to to join us here on Around the Farm. Uh, before we let you go, though, where can our listeners find your podcast and how often do you kick out new episodes? So we, we currently release uh, every week. So we'll have uh, one interview. You know, it's, it's a professor, you know, again, breaking up to the science and management. So we, we release the science in week one and then the management week two. So it's weekly releases. And uh, pretty much all you'd have to do is uh, go to Google and search a penny for your thoughts, uh, Apple or Spotify podcast. And penny is P-E-N-N-E-Y uh, just to match up with the last name and should come up. But yeah, we're on Apple and Spotify. Well, sounds great. Well, guys, you, you guys have been doing a fantastic job. Keep it up. Uh, uh, you got a subscriber here, so I uh, love listening. And uh, like I said, keep up the good work, man. I appreciate that. We should probably start giving you a shout out since uh, I remember going to you early on, you know, again, before we even started with, with some tips hey, from, that, from that, Clint. That was just a great, great conversation. Here before too long, you're going to pass us on, uh, on, on number of episodes. I'm going to be coming to you for advice here. So... All right. Hey, have a good one and uh, good luck uh, for the rest of the spring. Thanks, Clint. A big thanks to Andrew for joining us here on Around the Farm. That was a great conversation. And also thanks to you, the listener. And if you like this podcast, be sure to hit that like button, subscribe, and maybe share it with a friend or two as well. And as always, Around the Farm is brought to you by Climate Field View and can be found wherever you find your podcast at. And until next time, we'll see you around the farm.